Obviously this video could come back and bite me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Midnight Mule. Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. In this video, I want to warn you of a trap. So think Admiral Akbar. Think the shield is still up. Just be careful. I want to show you something to do with Saka. A lot of managers are now dumping Saka. There are better midfielders out there for less money that are scoring more points. Let's have a look at that. I've got Saka. That's why I'm talking about Saka. Saka so far has got 6, 2 and 3 points against 3 easy sides. He's only got 11 points. In the next 3 games he's got 2 greens and a red. Now we also have Rodrigo who's got 7, 15 and 13. He's got 35 points so far. He's cheaper than Saka. He's got 3 greens coming up. I should absolutely sell Saka and go for Rodrigo. It's a sure bet. So dump Saka, get in Rodrigo job done. Have we ever seen anything like this before? Well, let's go back to last season. Saka, first three games, he got four points. For Nels, West Ham, he would got 20 points in the first three games. That's an easy move across. What are the fixtures like? Saka's got two greens and a red. For Nels has two greens and a red. Let's dump Saka. Let's get For Nels. What happened? For Nels got six points. Saka got 22 points. And if that transfer cost four points, then that's quite a big swing. It's a swing of 20 points. Also last season, Zaha, the first three weeks had six points, whereas Antonio had 40 points. I realise they're different positions, but we could make a couple of subs, maybe get Antonio in. We have to get Antonio in. He's the best thing since sliced bread. Additionally, Zaha's got two reds and a green coming up, whereas Antonio's got only one red and two greens. Let's swap them over. So get rid of Zaha, get an Antonio. Antonio got 7 points. Zaha got 22 points. What about the season before that? Adams, Shea Adams. We got him because he's nice and cheap. Striker for Southampton. He's only got 8 points. But then Vardy's been absolutely smashing it. 22 points. Adams has got 2 greens and a red coming up. As has Vardy. Let's do some major surgery on our team and get in Vardy. We can't go the season without him. Adams out, Vardy in, Vardy gets 9 points, Adams get 21 points. And we would have spent maybe 8 points messing about of our team. Season before, Yarmolenko, West Ham midfielder, Sterling smashing it. I know he's got the Chelsea top on there, but he was Man City at the time. 34 points, OK, let's sell another expensive player to get in Sterling. We absolutely need him. Yarmolenko's got 2 greens and a red, Sterling's got 3 greens. He's going to be this year's seller. So... Yarmolenko out, Sterling in, Sterling got 5 points, Yarmolenko got 22 points. So back to this season, do I have to get rid of Saka and get in Rodrigo? Have we ever seen anything like this before? Well it's possible the next 3 game weeks Saka only gets 8 points and Rodrigo gets 35 points. And I should have got him. On the other hand, maybe Saka would get the normal 22 points and Rodrigo would get 8 points. So am I saying Rodrigo's bad? No. If I was wildcarding this week, I may well get in three, the three decent Leeds midfielders. And if I was wildcarding this week, I would definitely not buy Saka. However, is it worth me switching after just three games from Saka to Rodrigo? Looking at history, I think that's a risk I'm not willing to take because we don't know Rodrigo is going to be doing better than Saka. And I already have some plans what I'm intending to do. Obviously, this video could come back and bite me <laughs> and Rodrigo could smash it and Saka could get sent off or something else. Um, I'm absolutely not saying don't do this move. I'm saying it's not a shoe in Three weeks is not long enough to decide somebody's really good or especially somebody's really bad who's traditionally quite good. So... Um, I'm ready for lots of hate in the comments, <laughs> lots of trolling, and I expect people next couple of weeks to come back and comment on this video and say what a bad call it was. I'm just saying, look, consider history. I admit I could have made a video, looked at past stats, and done the exact opposite story in saying, this player was bad the first three weeks, next three weeks he was still bad, this player was good the first three weeks, he, sh he was good the next three, get him in. Every year in the FPL, we see people chasing points that have already gone. 
So just just be careful. Just I like to take a slightly longer term term view. Three weeks isn't enough for me to say Saka is no good. I hope that was a bit interesting and food for thought. Uh, if you want another hint, I'd say don't listen to people on YouTube. Or if you do want to listen to them, go back to their videos from last week or last season, see what their calls were and see what actually happened. It's quite enlightening. Okay, thanks. Bye.